All right, so we're posted up at the Office Depot because we got to print our tickets out manually. Yeah. Apparently, we so can't says, pull it up online. View and print tickets. It's the only game, only team where we've had to print out our tickets. This is so inconvenient. Work your magic, baby. If you ever need tickets, send your files via email to officedepot at printly.com. Here they are. Why don't we just print out a banner, a poster? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a thousand dollars. That's their like cheer sign. Print out some banners for Indiana State. <laughs> I think there's more too. What we just showed up. <laughs> Here's our tickets. Oh, oh my, this is so annoying. I'm trying to print this ticket out. We got this blank piece of paper. There we go. So yeah, check it out. That's much better. Every other ticket we've gotten, it's been really convenient, you know. It all just gets sent to email, PDF, and then download all that. But Georgia Southern is still in like the 90s. No uh, digital tickets. So we had to stop at an office depot, print these off. First, print it off like this. Wasted 12 cent on this. Guy had to come over and help us because we're incompetent. Don't we're know how to do anything. Just a bunch of dunces. Yeah, but we got them. Let's right. go to Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern, we go. Yeah, I just realized my name's yeah. Matthew Headley. He bought yeah. these tickets and then he uh, sold them. <laughs> hey, Matthew made a nice $16 profit from us selling these overpriced tickets. This is Matthew and Matthew. We'll see you in the field. Back everybody, we are on the road again. Week four, college football season. Yes, sir. We are back in the state of Georgia. We just can't seem to get out of this state. Something about Augusta and something about Atlanta. For this week, we're going to be visiting Georgia Southern, not Georgia State, but Southern. Everyone that goes to Georgia Southern will let you know. Southern, not state. I think that's what they say. Southern, not state. We looked at a few other games to go to, but it just kind of seemed like the perfect match to do these games back to back, you know, being rivals and all. So yeah, we're gonna compare them both, see if uh, out of the rivalry, which one has the better stadium. Georgia Southern plays in a more traditional stadium. I think it's called Allen E. Paulson Stadium. It holds like 25,000. It's kind of in a ditch, it's a ditch stadium. From what I've seen, pictures, it looks like it plays in its favor, so. All right, for this week's matchup, we're gonna go see the Georgia Southern Eagles versus the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns. The Ragin' Cajuns. Yes, sir, with good old Billy Napier. There's one thing I know about Georgia Southern is uh, not too long ago, they pulled off that upset against Florida. I remember that was not, not the best time to be a Florida Gator. Uh, so Georgia Southern them. is definitely not a team to sleep on. All right, so yeah, Georgia Southern comes in with a one and two record. Louisiana is at two and one right now. Our road team, our victorious road team streak might come to an end tonight, but we'll see. Um, Keep the streak alive, Georgia Southern. All right, so let's do some score predictions. Nate, what you thinking? I don't know, I think Louisiana, I think they they got the better coaching staff right now. I think they have a little more momentum. And Georgia Southern, I think they still run the triple option. I think Louisiana pulls off the win tonight. I think our home team streak ends. I'm gonna go with a final score of 27 to 14 in favor of the Raging Cajuns. I'm gonna have to agree with you on the Raging Cajuns on the dub. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it just comes to better coaching, better play calling. Uh, I think it's gonna be a higher scoring game. Uh, Georgia Southern gave up a lot of points to Florida Atlantic. So I don't really see any difference with another good team like the Raging Cajuns. So I think the final score is gonna be 31 to 14. All right, Alan Paulson Stadium. See you soon. Then we got the prison over here. Or the jail. I don't know, it looks Honestly, like a jail. Can't beat Augusta, Georgia.
ask for a better spot than this. I mean, right here, got some Zaxby's right over here. Can't complain. Life is good, I can't complain. You know, just love this grass, man. It's just something about it. That's what this program was built on right here. Well, for $26, I, I don't think you could beat this seat right over here. I mean, got a chicken sandwich, nice view. Life is good, man. Life is good. So it looks like they take the football pretty serious down here. I mean, you can tell it is live. So apparently an eagle is going to fly through here. So let's hear it, Eagle Nation. One more time for freedom, and one more time for the greatest team in America. Oh, it's up there. It is time for freedom. One. baby And that side was a lot louder than this side right over here. Away, I'm proud of you. I don't know if it's just at home. You gotta step your game up. I don't know if it's just how like noise and sound carries, but the side was pretty weak. Yeah, I don't know if it's the sound either, but I'm gonna have to give the edge to this side right over here. Let's get the kickoff, baby. So we noticed on the visitor side that there's not a lot of red. So it looks like it's taken over by a lot of Georgia Southern fans. I mean, Louisiana is a pretty far drive, but over there in that section, I see a little bit of red. 10 Louisiana fans. 10 loyal Louisiana fans, man. Shout out to y'all. Yeah, it kind of takes me back to the to the days I went to Carowinds. Like the Screaming Eagle or something. Perfect marketing tool right there. All right, so I didn't notice this until now, but they got a whole school bus right over here. I call this the party bus, baby. Hey, kudos for creativity. It's just, I don't know how you could have so many significant figures with, a, with one program. So I mean, you, got, you got Ted Smith Family Football Center. You got the Dean Bishop Fieldhouse. 
got Glenn. Oh, down there we got Eric Russell. Press box, I guess. At Allen at Allen E. Paulson Stadium. And they play on Glenn Bryant Field. So road team reviews took the first L of the season, not the result that we wanted, but yeah. overall, I think it was a really fun time. Uh, pretty did, good experience. We did leave a little early. I, I doubt the miracle could happen, but yeah, home team lost, but the road team, we still are always winning. Well, we just got to our car, so uh, we'll see you later for the review. All right, everyone, we're officially back. Let's get to these grades. All right. so. You know, we looked around every week. We kind of like map out the college football schedules. And, you know, we figured we did Georgia State, and now we had the perfect opportunity with Georgia Southern playing at home. We were just like, you know what? Let's make this a little rivalry uh, mini series. Yeah. Compare the two for uh, I think the rivalry name or the the name of the rivalry is called Modern, Modern Day Hate. Modern Day Hate, which yes, is pretty sir. cool. So let's see which of these two teams won in terms of stadium. Let's get stadium structure. This was a nice little stadium. It's actually, it was nicknamed by one of their, their great coach, Irk Russell. Good old not, Irk. Not Eric. Not, not Steve Irk. Not Urkel, just Irk, Irk Russell. That's who their press box is named after. And uh, he coined it with the name, what's the prettiest little stadium? The prettiest little stadium. Yeah, which I agree, it's a nice, little tiny stadium in in statesboro georgia yeah, just in the middle of nowhere it's in a ditch it's a ditch stadium it's kind of cool you you start out you walk up a hill and then you're up on the little like flat surface at the top yeah pretty small initial home section but it has two hills on either side which i think it's cool that the hills are actually on the sideline grandstand sides yeah. A lot of they're on each yeah, corner. I think it's really cool. A lot of stadiums are in the end zone or behind the end zone, so it's kind of a, a twist on hill yeah. seating. So you call it a ditch stadium, but the way I look at it is, it's kind of built in Statesboro, Georgia. It, it kind of adds a little character because Statesboro, Georgia is a more country area, has a lot of hills. So I, I think it was cool that it was like it was just built right inside of the land. They just rooted it right in there they did have a nice little brick facade that they laid around just like little hints of brick around the stadium mm -hmm. not not too much which oh, it's better than just leaving that plain white concrete look yeah adding that finish makes it nice and clean looking oh yeah the wayside was just the same type of grandstand in the earth mound with probably the tiniest little upper deck you'll ever see <laughs> like the yeah. thing is so small i think it was like yeah. maybe like six thousand people that were on the top row or something like that it's kind of trippy because like walking into the stadium you see the upper deck yeah. usually upper decks are like towering above you but this one was kind of maybe one story yeah above it, was, you. it wasn't tall at all yeah it was nice and then it had two very nice field houses yeah i was about to i was about to bring mm -hmm. that up i think uh the football center i think it's the ted smith Ted Smith Family Football Center. They just renovated that. I think they added that football center in 2013, 2014. I think that football center is top of the line. I mean, pretty tall building with a lot of glass where you could see through and they have a weight room built on the bottom half of that. And then on the top half, you have like like a little- Little, little balcony yeah, you, section yeah. for do probably like special contributor, donors. Along with that balcony, they have a pretty big scoreboard. It's not like the biggest scoreboard in the world, but pretty decently sized. But yeah, one flaw or a couple flaws. This it, is this is probably something that we're both gonna agree on here. Yeah, the sound system <laughs> was pretty Dude, poor. It was just really quiet. I don't know if uh, it was because it was the speaker on the scoreboard, and that was the only speaker that they had in the stadium. So let's hear it again, one more time.
but the thing is and that we were, we were like, close. Yeah. yeah, we were like probably the closest to the sound system. And we still else. had trouble making making out what they were saying. Yeah. And then overall, as we have with these other smaller stadiums we've gone to, it is just overall it's small. Yeah. So you can only get so far with a small stadium. Another little takeaway from the stadium is something that you brought up earlier was the was the press box. Um, yeah. It it was a it was a decently looking press box, but it when, was built off of like sheet metal and when you really look at it from far away, it just looks like probably like a really sound concrete white structure. Yeah. But then when you get up close to it, you can kind of see it's really just like just metal sheet metal around. Like uh, I felt like you could go and like bang on it, and it would yeah. just be like it just. I don't know. Kind of on the lower end. While yeah. it is pretty cool and the suites inside look really to say, cool. The thing is, is like you like, could literally walk like right into the not into the suites, but there's like a little alleyway you could walk through and then right next to you are two sides of the VIP areas of the press box. So you could literally look right through them through the glass and everything. It did kind of look like the loading dock to a roller coaster though. It's <laughs> like yeah. like afterburn at Carowinds, but all right, we have gone over structure enough. We have rambled enough. So let's get to the grades. I gave this a 79, which is a C plus. Almost cracked that B minus range, but Tristan. Yeah. I'm not that much higher than you. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and give this an 80, which is a B minus. Atmosphere. This atmosphere is pretty, it was interesting. The students pretty much packed that whole oh, opposing yeah. grandstand. You could definitely tell the difference between the students and the norm and like the regular fans mm -hmm. because they would be chanting certain things that, you know, reg regular normal fans wouldn't chant. But uh, the student section is literally like, it's not located in the corner. It's kind of like in the lower middle part of the away section. When something big happened this was it was a it was a soft roar which yeah. there's a difference between just like loud noises but like you could actually feel the roar and the intensity oh, of yeah. the people that were over there oh yeah from from kickoff to first through fourth down from touchdowns and everything they always seem to have some kind of chant like like a traditional chant going on where we sat we sat on the hill which is definitely the most family friendly area because you know you're coming with your family you bring your kids they don't want to sit still and assign seats and bleachers so yeah. it's nice for them to just kind of sprawl out on the the hill they can run around a lot of kids will roll in carrying on the tradition of rolling down the hills man yeah the kids see a hill they gotta freaking roll down <laughs> and they just can't resist yeah one thing i could say about the atmosphere is that this school like you could tell they're not there just to be there like they're there to experience like everything else outside of the football game yeah i mean the uh, we we parked 25 minutes away from the stadium thought we were gonna walk there and then we found a shuttle and it took us throughout the whole entire campus which i thought pretty su surprisingly nice campus it, it was a fairly nice campus the moment we arrived we arrived at this humongous tailgate like parking lot and they had a live band playing uh, they had a just a lot of events going on a lot more flags and tents up than i was expecting like this this whole game that from the tailgating to the fans and game itself it yeah. felt like a very small like toned down sec school like it had yeah. that same kind of environment and just overall atmosphere that these sec schools bring oh, oh, I, I think they take pride in their football team i mean Regardless, I mean, the team was one and two, but they still showed out and were loud. And yeah. you could tell, like, they, they're they here to support their team no matter what. Cool thing they did, too, was going into the fourth, they were down. They did this cool thing where they had the lights kind of going in and out, kind of blinking yeah. or strobing. Well, well, and you, you know, like traditional schools, like in the fourth quarter, you would just get your phone light out and then they have an app where it just like blinks with the music. Yeah. But they had the stadium actually change their whole entire lights. Like the stadium lights yeah. system. Everyone got their phones out and did the phone lightings and they played uh, Don't Stop Believing. Yeah. So that was a cool, cool thing we got to see there at the end. And again, what took away some points for me was our side was pretty weak. I wish that we were on the other side the whole time. Like there's a lot more energy over there. Kind of take that away. They should just add more seats, expand the grandstand. For atmosphere, I gave them a 76, which is a C. Like I said, I think the takeaway from us sitting in that grass field, uh, 
that, that's another reason why it's not as high as like top tier stadiums or anything like that. But I still think it's, I think it's a mid tier. It's gonna be a mid tier grade. My overall grade is gonna be an 82 for this. All right, and on to scenic value. Scenery was all right. Kind of just the good old Southern small town USA vibe. Not much going on really. I mean, there were some trees and I think what stood out or what really enhanced that was it being down in that ditch. It made the trees a little bit higher up because they're up on that higher section. So not too much. You did get a nice view of this water tower in the background, which really it just added to that country small town yeah. vibe. You know you're in the country when you see a water tower. Being in Statesboro, Georgia, I think it, it's very clear that it's in the country. I think this is going to be like a, a biased opinion. If, if you like the city, this is probably not going to be your favorite stadium. Uh, but if you love the country, I think this is just like a nice small town field. There's not really much to look at, but it is, it is just a nice little country environment to be around. Small town USA. So yeah, we gave this the same exact scores as Georgia State's. Cause yeah, I feel like they were both pretty even. This one at least had some nature, some country views. Well, Georgia State had more of that uh, urban city setting, so. I think they were both good in their own respective ways. Two completely different schools, two completely different stadiums, but overall, I think both, they, they deserve the same grade. Both pretty average. Yeah, we don't need to go over scenic value anymore because there's really nothing too crazy with them. Yeah. So I gave it a 77, a C plus. I as well am gonna give it the same grade as I gave it to Georgia State, and it's gonna be a 79. So, two C pluses, nothing crazy. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the strongest category for this stadium. Did very well in this category, history and tradition. It was uh, a lot of cool things they did. It was not lacking in this department. Oh yeah. Just to start things off, you know, right before kickoff, one of the coolest traditions coolest things I've seen at a football game was we didn't know what was going on until they played it on the scoreboard of the scoreboard of, that yeah. we couldn't hear through I think they called the, the Eagles name is freedom I think I don't know but they were like 1984 freedom made its first flight I don't and, think uh, I don't think I've ever seen a bald eagle like that close ever in my whole entire yeah. life until that very day and so really cool tradition of course there the Georgia Southern Eagles they let it go fly over the stadium. It flew like right over our heads, which is awesome. To be honest, I've never felt more American that day in my yeah. entire life. So that's a really, really awesome tradition. The only other school that I know flies an eagle is Auburn. Yeah, but that, that, see I like think, Auburn, that stadium is so big, like smaller stadium, there's, that's an advantage. Like this yeah, eagle flew right, right above us. over us. Yeah. So we got Irk Russell, he's who the press box is named after. Then you got the stadium, Alan E. Paulson. I'm assuming that Alan E. Paulson was an alumni and he donated about like a million dollars to the program. Uh, definitely contributed a lot. Yeah. And then there was also another significant person that belonged to the program. He was a former senator. Glenn Bryant? Yeah, it was uh, Mr. Glenn Bryant. He donated like 250K to the program. I believe they named the field Pretty after him as well. Yeah. Yeah, just things like that with all these, really the people that helped establish this program. I mean, sure, the football team, they won a lot of FCS championships. Yeah. So, like, they made a name for themselves on the field, but it's also that loyal fan base, loyal donors who bought into the program as well. And I think, historically, Georgia Southern is a, is a pretty successful winning program. Uh, I mean, you see on the banners, I mean, you see all the championships that they won. Yeah, they've won several FCS championships, and in their pretty, still pretty new, fresh FBS run, they've already won three bowl games. Yep. Oh yeah, Gata. Gata? How can we forget about Gata? It's really simple, just get after their it's just a really fiery spirited acronym. I think sometimes they have it on like the back of their helmets. Just a cool phrase, you know? I think just ties in perfectly with what football's all about. So, I mean, there's no shortage of history or tradition anywhere, whether it's these field houses that are named after these important figures to the program, it's Gata, the Eagle, even the Chance, you know? They pretty much hit all marks of history and tradition grade scale. Really the only thing that held them back is that they are still kind of a new, newer yeah. program. I mean, 1984, They've done a lot great. of work in the past 30, 30 or so years. Oh yeah. Props to them. Uh, this is the highest history and tradition grades that we've given. 
I gave them a very solid 84, which is a B. Because I think Georgia Southern has an identity. I think they put a lot of work from the past couple decades. Uh, with the short amount of time that they had, I think they've done a pretty great job as far as creating a culture and creating a tradition within this program. Uh, because of that, I'm gonna give that an 85. All right, so we're on to the last one to wrap things up as usual is field design. Not too much flair, you know, kind of just your standard stadium as, or your standard field as usual. Oddly enough, this was the first stadium out of the four we've gone to so far. This was the first field that actually used that old traditional number font for the yard markers. Again, I don't know why all these schools are using turf. I think this, I think this is just a modern thing because from 1984 to 2015, they start, I mean, they use real glass. <laughs> they use real glass. <laughs> they use glass on their field. <laughs> they use real grass the whole time. And I guess, every, I guess the whole college football community made a change. And uh, in 2016, they switched the field turf. And because of that, that's, that's going to knock the grade off a little bit. Um, yeah. I think it comes down to, I think it honestly is like funding. Cause you think about it, you gotta pay a whole like service to mow the grass yeah. if you get real grass. And you gotta have sprinkler irrigation system. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a lot of maintenance. Might be the more economic move, but still, yeah. just props to you if you're still using real grass out there. Yeah, the, the overall field, uh, really not that much more to it. I think the main difference between that and Georgia State is that Georgia State had the two-tone colored field. Yeah. And then uh, Georgia State just had the same color throughout the whole entire thing. Again, folks, like, it's just a field design. Yeah. But then again, like, there are some schools out there with really unique fields that warrant good grades. Exactly. And we'll get to those soon enough, but majority of them are just pretty run-of-the-mill, like this one. I gave it a 76, which is just your average C. Georgia State and Georgia Southern, uh, they both had their pros and cons with each field. Uh, one a little bit different from the other, but I think they even itself out at the end of the day with the two-tone field at Georgia State, but the field, uh, but the logos and the field paint on Georgia Southern, uh, I think it evens itself out pretty well. So because of that, I'm going to give it the same grade as I did Georgia State's field, and it's going to be an 80 overall. Yeah. The moment you've all been waiting for, the final grade. All right, my final grade for Allen E. Paulson Stadium, or just Paulson Stadium is what it's more commonly known as. I gave it a 78.3, which is a solid C+. And my final grade is an 81.1, which is a B-. minus. You average those two grades up and it comes out to be a 79.7, a C plus, but, but that we also add a point because of the beer. That always ever important beer bonus point. Yes, sir. Bumped it up one point to an 80.7, which is our first and our highest rated grade so far, our first B. So Georgia Southern, you claim the top spot right now. Kudos to y'all, man. Congrats to y'all. To say the least, this stadium exceeded my expectations. I did oh, not. Yeah. I did not expect Georgia Southern. You know, I didn't expect the overall experience to be to be that good. Um, if you're looking to go to a smaller school, if you're looking to go to any kind of Sun Belt school, uh, you want to experience something different. Georgia Southern is definitely that school you. you yeah. You if, you, try. if you're in a neighboring state nearby in the region, yeah. and your team is playing Georgia Southern, definitely make the drive because it's a fun atmosphere, fun venue. Yeah. And, you know, this stadium made me excited to go to more Sunbelt teams. Belt. Coastal's up there in the top 20. They're ranked. They're winning consistently. App State's doing good. They're probably going to be ranked soon. Just because they're Sunbelt schools doesn't mean that you can just pass up on their stadiums. So. That's what we're here to do. Sunbelt's on the rise. Sunbelt Funbelt. Yes, sir. All right, folks. Let us know in the comments below. Who do you think won out of the modern hate rivalry as far as stadiums go? You think Georgia State had the better stadium? You think Georgia Southern had it? Let us know below. And uh, yeah, like this video. Subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Whatever you got to do to uh, keep coming back. So we'll see you next week on game day and on the road. All right, this is Road Team Reviews, and we're out.